Hey guys, thank you so much for taking the time. We loved, loved, loved the movie. I mean, I grew up in the 80s, so I had the Cabbage Patch doll and the Nintendo system, so I was super cool. <laughs> but uh, this question is for both of you. If you had to, what's your ideal action plan for getting that, I don't know, the hottest gaming system out there now? So Winslow, you had like a whole plan in the movie. So what would you do now? Oh my, okay. Um, so I would get on my iPad, Amazon.com, order, boom, done. No, but see, it sells out and like the bots and stuff get it. So that's not gonna work. That's too cool. easy. Okay, so, so then so then I would go, okay. So, okay, so what if, okay, so if, if my parents, so say my parents, let's make this even harder. My parents don't want me to have this. So what, what I would have to do, I'd have can to I, use- Can I answer this question for you once I can help you? Sure, fine. Let's hack this. Let's hack this answer in a good way. Um, you, you're starring in a film, and that is going to allow you a little bit of access via Warner Brothers people. Everyone on this Zoom screen right now is like nice Teresa, right? Because we're getting to do this. You just need to keep telling the Warner Brothers people that you want a thing, and you just keep like, wow, if I could only have that one thing that I can't seem to get. They're no people. They know people. That's what I think you should do. You should just keep like work, looking, up the chain, looking up the chain and then finally getting <laughs> someone to do the thing. I'm, I'm working with Sony right now. I might have to have yes. them. Is PS5, thing. is that the new thing? What's yeah. the thing? <laughs> That's it. it. What is the thing, Ashley? Is that the thing that everyone wants right now? I mean, a lot of people are after the PS5. We haven't found one yet. So I'm trying to take some notes, but you know, Amazon's not going to work for me. Not to win some parents. <laughs> They'll bring one down the chimney for no, me. And Megan, I'm really jealous of your Nano Leaf panels. So my question for you is, how do you guys get in the Christmas or holiday spirit? And what are some of your family's favorite Christmas traditions? A little tradition from my family is my, my parents or I guess Santa. Um, there's always, there's always a, when when we when we like wake up on Christmas Day, there's always um, vanilla and chocolate covered pretzels that are hung on the tree on each one of the little rings, and then and then while you're opening the presents, you like take one, and then like you know, and then it's it's really nice though. It's it's super cool. I love that tradition. How fun! Yeah. I am I am gobsmacked that Winslow is parents are Mr. and Mrs. Claus. Like, right? I, Let I me know. You need to take a moment to appreciate that, because that's cool. Sure uh, traditions for my family, we, don't, we, we usually open some gifts on Christmas Eve and then most of the gifts on Christmas morning post Santa Claus arriving. We usually um, make cinnamon rolls in the morning, which is always kind of a great thing because it's a sugar fix that you need when you're mm -hmm. losing from <laughs> a little sleep deprivation. Uh, uh, and then otherwise, my, my parents, our kids' grandparents and my husband's parents, um, rather than all of us spending the holidays together because they have their own lives, they usually come in uh, and, and stay with us for the four or five days, like the 19th, 20, 21st, 22nd. And so we do our gifting and all of our Christmas there, which is wonderful because it expands the, the, the celebrating and all. So we get to have focused time with the grandparents, do their gift exchange, then they can kick them to the curb. And then we get to have our, our families, uh, like our nuclear families, uh, Christmas gift exchange uh, on Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. I loved watching the movie getting all nostalgic for the late 80s. What was it like for you getting to experience that period of time since you weren't around for it the first time. It was great. I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of fun getting to uh, see what that all was like um, and just see, I don't know, how it all, how it all was and how it all worked out. Um, Desperate to grow a mullet. Well, yeah, I, well, I guess it was kind of a mullet. Yeah, I did have a little bit of I had, I really had to grow a mullet on Timmy Failure, which is another movie I had done. And I had a really long mullet for that one. It was a lot of fun just getting to see like how, how the whole thing works. And I mean, I knew about the NES. I knew about all that stuff. I mean, I didn't really, but I don't really know how like really important that was. Um, 
but you know it, it was really cool learning about all of that and just getting to immerse myself into the role this is for neil actually um i was just wondering how much of yourself you saw in your character and it does he display the same kind of storytelling um, style as you do? Great question, and uh, absolutely, 100%. I, it was weird reading the script because it sounded exactly like the way I actually talked to my daughter. I, may, I, I always thought that I should talk to my children like they're people and not like baby people. That was a weird thing for me. I just have, when I grew up, I didn't like when people talked to me like I was just didn't understand how sentences worked. And so I never did that. And now that they're 11, chaos. They're, they know too much, it's exhausting. But I recognized that in the script, uh, older Jake Winslow's talking to his daughter in very normal terms, like, like a regular person. And I loved that. And, and his sense of humor is very similar to my vocal cadence. So it was super easy to, uh, to, to hop into that. What was it like for you in the 80s and were you on a personal quest for Nintendo? Yeah, I actually, we were a, an in-television family. It was sort of the Atari versus in-television. And so we were team in-television, which was very hilariously strange because the controller, if you don't know the in-television was like this long and you had film strippy kind of things that you had to pull out and put in a new film strip for the football <laughs> game that you would play on the same button pads. Uh, so I guess, it, it, but, but once the tech started in earnest, I like everyone wanted the new one. I wanted the new Wii. I wanted the new Xbox. I wanted like the new thing that was bright and shiny and technological. And truth be told, I would play each of those game systems like six times because, I, because they take a long time. Playing one of these games is no joke. You can't, you can't just play, like my favorite games now are, I guess, cause I'm an old man, are, are the ones that you can finish, you know, like the room or something where you can play it and then be done with it. These open world games are amazing to watch, but I can't. I can't go down that rabbit hole. The whole, the whole, now the whole, port, port, like people purposefully buy games based off of game time, which is like basically right? the average, it's the average that it takes to finish the game. So if it means people buy it for longer, meaning like if, right. it says if, if there's like, that means that, you know, out of one game, you could get 50 hours of game time. Come on. That's why they buy it, because they buy it because it gives you 50 hours. That's exhausting. Like, why play Roblox? Is there a favorite scene in the movie or a favorite memory while you were filming? I loved the kid that talked about eating erasers and stuff with, with the glasses. Yes! He's uh, really funny. He, I don't know if that was... His real name is Jacob Laval. He's a great actor. Um, All and... his stuff made me laugh. The throwing up scene made me laugh. <laughs> Uh, it was too much. And the uh, King of the Mountain scene made me laugh. I got all, all of those like slow mo. I thought those were funny. Those are all awesome. I loved that for sure. And I love, I love all the roller skating stuff. It was super fun to shoot because um, that was all like you know we just got to like roller skate for like hours. That was really fun. All of the um, yeah for sure. All of the snow mountain stuff. I love shooting that. You know, there was like a 30 foot snow mountain that was real and they just tumbled us down it, down it. And it was so fun. I mean, it was really cold because um, it was all real snow. And I was wearing jeans and probably two other layers under that. And it soaked all the way through. My butt was freezing. I was so cold, There's but you know, it was worth it. It was so, it was, it was fun. It was fun. If there's something focusing on the movie or just real life that you would want to bring from the 80s to now. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> but we'd have to re regress, wouldn't we? We'd have to go backwards in time. We'd have to we'd have to shed some things, you know. Remember having arguments about like who was right about who was in a movie without having to look it up and, and are arguing for like, and now we do that. Isn't it interesting? You go like, no, 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 don't look at your phone. Don't, don't, don't do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, Let's everybody have, can be an I, expert I, now because we have oh, all the information. Yeah. yeah. But it's interesting how that technology has changed the dynamic of, of how we interact with, with each other and how families interact with each other and how we spend time together. You know, that's what I'd like to have back in some some way. I I I I, I happen to think that the pendulum is swing has swung so far to the side that that it has to start coming back. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's so far over. I think so too. Does that I make mean, sense? It does. I was going to say trickle down economics, but I guess that too. Um, <laughs> Daryl, I feel the same. I'm like, I, it's, it's not that I want to necessarily bring things from the eighties to now, but I, d I do think that we're really nostalgic and most people are yearning for, you know, more connection that's not through a screen and that's that feels more authentic in a way and where every experience feels more special because we don't have everything at our fingertips and you know where our choices were much more limited things were special in a different way and i think it's hard it's just harder as a parent to create that when if you have the internet at home, your kids can have access all the time to kind of everything. So um, I think parenting kids and making sure that they don't just, you know, function from that, like you want something, you get it right now type of mentality um, is harder. And I, that's, that's something I, I wish for. Hey, thank you so much. So I would love to know what would you describe as kind of the overall message uh, that you want take families to take away from this movie? Ooh, I suck at that. Ooh, I'm gonna take a stab, Steve. And yeah, go for it. I'll go for it. I'll go for it. Um, I'm heading in. Oh man. So <laughs> thank you. So I think you know overall that that well, listen, the message that I took away that I hope other people take away is you know, um, the time and time with your family, especially as a child, and is really hard to appreciate. And it's really hard to appreciate what our parents are doing for us when as kids, understandably, we just want what we want. And we can't see, you know, through their eyes, and we can't see their perspective. And, you know, that's what I love about the movie is that it helps us like create you know, or think about that lens of it made me think about, oh, God, my parents work their asses off to create these special experiences for us that I know I wasn't as grateful for as I should have been. Um, and yet I'm doing the same for my kids and I don't expect them to like throw me a parade. I want to do that. And so it's this kind of like generational understanding that you you get um, and as you get older and that's to me, you know, seeing Neil Patrick Harris's character and the older Jake passed that same message onto his daughter. There's just some like beautiful generational like narratives that, that are like woven through the story that I just think it's, it's really beautiful. And that's really what I hope people take away from it. I agree. I think that's good. <laughs> no, no, I do. I mean, you know, I have parents that are, that are, are getting old. And, and there was a pandemic and we couldn't get together. Yeah. That's going to end. And then a new tradition will happen. Mm -hmm. And then my sisters will have to create a new tradition. And then my kids will have to create their new tradition when I'm gone. And then their kid, you know, it's just kind of interesting. It's yeah. like, how do you keep it going? Was there a specific gift growing up that you wanted that you didn't get or a favorite gift that you received? Well, I think, you know, God bless my parents. I got most of the things that I really asked for. The one thing I, I remember getting that I didn't want was my dad was, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they were from Filene's basement, had purchased in like a number of irregular sweatshirts that didn't fit anyone. They looked normal in the box. And then I put one on and like one arm was like up here, the other armhole was down there. I mean, I couldn't believe they were even selling them. My dad was the kind of guy who just was like, it's a sweatshirt, it'll keep you warm. Like who cares what it looks like? You know, I didn't understand having three daughters who cared deeply about fashion and clothes and 
So I remember the Christmas where we all got multiple irregular sweatshirts, um, individually wrapped. And there was like a giant stack of presents, which we were so psyched about. And then realized they're all irregular sweatshirts. That was a tough Christmas. I remember my dad, my dad um, spent weeks build, building me a train set that was that on, too sweet. that had mountains and streams and fields and pan made trees. And I, I had no clue until Christmas Eve. And I was blown away. And I knew as a kid, how much time was put into that. Mm. Yeah, I remember that, that was pretty special. Mm. And my sister gave me a tub of Cool Whip. Okay. That was horrible. Honestly, that sounds great though. Like I, you say that that was the worst present you ever got. I'm like, that's- Well, that's bad. like when you're low that. on your, and like, and I do this with my kids. It's like, you have to go get something for your brother. Right. Like, oh, I'll just go into the pantry. And you have to, and don't ask them. I'm not right. buying it. You have to get them something. So we started that era. And that's when my sister was like, here's some cool whip. Here. Did you guys grow up playing video games as well? And do you have that connection to those old school games? Are you into the modern, really high tech, amazing graphic games that you have available now? I'm into all of them. I mean, I'll play, I'll play, I'll, I'll game with my son. But then yep. I got like, uh, you know, I have an Asteroids arcade in the basement. I got a Miss Pac-Man Galaga tabletop. I got a, um, I got a um, Adam's Family pinball. I dig that. But like um, my assistant and I for years in my trailer when I was shooting a film, all we played was 2001 NHL hockey on PlayStation. But it had to be 2001. It was a great year. You could turn off all the penalties and just fights <laughs> yeah, my, my, when my wife would take away video games from my son i would be behind my son going <laughs> because we played together that was my entertainment that was, yeah you so you had to suffer the consequences my daughter, my daughter never played she hated it 